I'm having breakfast, breakfast with Larry Lee. Yodel Lodo Dee, Yodel Lodo Dee. I'm having breakfast, breakfast with Larry Lee. Yodel Lodo Dee, Yodel Lodo Dee. Warning, portions of the Breakfast with Barry Lee podcast had been known to cause giggling in laboratory rats. On today's podcast, we're going to be talking about Wheels for Wellness, an incredible local nonprofit that provides free transportation to medical appointments and treatments. Tracy Toth and Ann Lamana standing by with the story and details about their beautiful fundraiser coming up. Right now, though, your brain buster. The average person learn how to do this at the age of eight. Learn how to do what? Is it A, learn how to swim? B, to sign their name in cursive? Or C, ride a two-wheel bike? Your answer coming up after the interview. Before we take a look at the podcast planner, just a couple of personal notes here from the cabin. Remember that mouse I caught a few weeks ago in my humane trap and I set it free out there at the end of the woods by my compost pile where it could burrow under a log and then I got to worrying and feeling bad that he was all by himself or she was all by herself. Well, I caught another one this week and let it loose in the same area so I hope they find each other. I'm sure they'll share stories of their capture. Yeah, I smelled this incredible peanut butter. That's what got you too, huh? Not going near that stuff again. And plus, on April Fool's Day, I posted a video of the first sighting of a snake for the season. Now, we live along a creek, and it's not unusual from time to time to see a water snake, common brown water snake, they're not poisonous, out sunning themselves. And so it was on the first, big fat one was sunning itself. So I posted a video of it on my Facebook page, and so many people thought that it was a rubber snake because it was just sunning itself and not moving. Now, it was real. All right, let's look at the podcast planner, nationaldaycalendar.com. Monday the 10th, it's National Siblings Day. Hello, Richard. Hello, Kay. It's also National Farm Animals Day, focusing attention on the humane care of farm animals. Tuesday the 11th, National Pet Day and 8-Track Tape Day. That first 8-Track Tape player released in 1965. Oh, yeah, I had one in my 1972 Gremlin. Now, the big thing about 8-tracks was that it was just endless loop. You didn't have to stop and turn a cassette over. But the only thing is, you'd be right in the middle of your favorite songs. da 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 ka chunk da 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 while it changed channels. <laughs> Wednesday the 12th, National Grilled Cheese Sandwich Day. And it's National Licorice Day. On Thursday the 13th, National Scrabble Day. The game came along in 1948. The original names of the game were Lexico and Crisscross Words until they finally settled on Scrabble. My mother loved Scrabble. Rest her soul, and we kept her Scrabble board. It's got little pencil marks and little notes on there where she played the grandkids. Yeah, that's a sacred game board to us. On Friday the 14th, it's National Gardening Day and also Look Up at the Sky Day. You know, we're so busy looking ahead or looking at our phones, we forget to look up. Saturday the 15th is National Laundry Day, and you're thinking, wait a minute, April 15th, aren't taxes due? Nope, taxes aren't due until Tuesday the 18th, so you have a few extra days. And then Sunday the 16th, it's Eggs Benedict Day. Alrighty, it's time to shine our spotlight on a phenomenal local nonprofit. Want to talk about an incredible nonprofit and a group of angel drivers. It's Wheels for Wellness, and there's a special fundraiser coming up on Sunday, April 23rd. Here to tell us all about it, two special guests. First, we welcome Tracy Toth, who is director of Wheels for Wellness. Tracy, good to have you with us. Good morning. Thank you. And I welcome Ann Lamana, who is the chair of the board of directors and also a volunteer driver wearing two hats. Hi, Ann. Good to have you with us. Hi, Barry. Thanks for having us. Well, let me start with Tracy. This is just such an incredible service to the community. Tell us about Wheels for Wellness. Wheels for Wellness provides free door-to-door transportation for medical appointments for those in our region who just don't have other means of transportation. And what areas do you serve? We serve Winchester and the counties of Frederick, Clark, Warren, and Northern Shenandoah. And there's absolutely no cost to the clients that are getting the ride. No cost. 
we mainly serve low or no income families. But not necessarily. You know, we've also served families in the middle income and upper income range. Really, the main criteria is to not have any other means of transportation. However, like Tracy said, usually that's the lower income that doesn't have transportation, but not always. And we don't want income to discourage anybody from applying for the service. So your volunteer drivers are taking people not only to medical appointments, but to dialysis, maybe cancer treatments, mental health appointments, physical therapy. It runs the gamut, right? Yes, it does. As long as it's medical related, it qualifies. You know, having a medical condition is one thing and stressful enough, but trying to find a ride? I mean, we as human beings, we hate to ask even family and friends, but sometimes, you know, when there's nobody there to take in, especially if you have family that lives out of town, it can be very, very stressful trying to get a ride to an appointment. You're right, Barry. I remember I picked up this lady and she was on oxygen. And it was the first time I drove her. So I, a lot of times, will ask people, how did you hear about Wheels from Wellness? What made you call us? And she told me that she was at the doctor's office and that the nurse gave her a list of appointments. And she turned to the nurse and she said, I can't do that. She said, I don't have a ride. I don't have family that live here. I can't make all of these appointments. And the nurse actually referred her to Wheels for Wellness. But that lady on oxygen wasn't going to go to these appointments. And that would have been devastating. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I referred to your volunteers as angels because they do this on their own time and at their own expense. Tell us about your volunteers. We currently have a pool of about 25. In the past, we've operated with 30 to 35 volunteers and then the pandemic hit. And we had five drivers who agreed to stay on and transport throughout the pandemic. And since then, some have returned and we've actually recruited a lot of new drivers. But this group, they just go well above and beyond. We have five in particular, I always call them our Fab Five, who pick up the bulk of the transport and the bulk of the mileage every month. If you go back and look, it's always the same five people. Most of us are retired. I actually started to be a driver when I went from full-time work to part-time work, and I was off two days a week, and so I would drive on the two days that I was off. And then since I've retired, of course, I've picked up and I'll drive basically any day of the week. But the bulk of our drivers are retired because they are the ones that have the time. You know, I imagine not only the gratitude for having a ride, But for a lot of these people, somebody to talk to, I bet there's some special bonds that develop. There are. Even with the drivers, there was one driver who lives alone, and he emailed me during the pandemic and said how happy he was to be back to driving because he has had nobody to talk to while he was isolated. So it's not just the clients, it's the drivers also. It benefits both. Before we talk about your fundraiser, let's talk about your expenses and why you need to fundraise. Even though we use volunteer drivers, we provide them with accident and liability insurance. And each year, based on their mileage, we also gift them gas gift cards to help reimburse some of their expenses. But I'm sure what we give them is only a tiny portion of what they've spent over the cost of a year. We also have two part-time employees. Tracy, of course, is our executive director. She works 28 hours a week. And we also have a part-time contract scheduler who actually matches the volunteers to the people that they're going to pick up. And that's a process in itself. So we have two part-time people that we have to pay. And our executive director, Tracy, she applies for grants all the time. And most of the time, if not all of the time, grants don't cover operational expenses. They really cover more program expenses. So we have to fundraise salaries, basically. So that's where the bulk of the money from our fundraiser will go to. And let's talk about that fundraiser coming up on Sunday, April 23rd from 2 until 5 at the beautiful Millwood Station. Tell us about Tablescapes. Tablescapes is a afternoon showcase of finely decorated dining tables and children's tables. We have a silent auction, raffle, door prizes, music, refreshments, demonstrations, and displays. It's just kind of an elegant afternoon. And the people who decorate the tables are just regular people. You know, they're teachers, they're social workers. 
they're just community people who want to help Wheels for Wellness, and also they have a love of dishes or glassware, and a lot of them collect it and have a number of sets of dishes. Tracy is one of those people. <laughs> um, ask Tracy how many sets of dishes she has. Oh, yeah, I can't answer that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's how many she has. And we have several other people that would say the exact same thing. And every year they'll come back and they'll have a whole different table setting. And it's a table setting of four of some china or just some people use their everyday dishware. And they'll have silverware and glassware, and then they'll decorate the table. They'll have a theme. Since we're in April, some people pick an Easter theme, and they'll have Easter bunnies and Easter baskets and some bring flowers. Or we have people who do Christmas themes. We had last year a gentleman who did a fishing theme. He had fish hooks for napkin holders. His dishes had fish on them, and he had a whole theme. Beautiful table. It was a beautiful table. You know, so creative. All of our people who decorate are just unbelievably creative. You know, we have people who have done a golf table, a patriot table, all different things. It's something that I was never exposed to before. I didn't know people did this. So it's really quite fun. And you're not actually sitting at one of the decorated tables and eating. You sit elsewhere and eat. And you just kind of look around at the different tables. The person who decorated the table, you ask them about their dishes. We had somebody, I think, last year that their grandmother had hand-painted the dishes. I mean, it was like they were beautiful, you know. So it just kind of sparks conversation, sparks idea for people who come. I mean, it really is a work of art, some of the tables. You can go to our website, and you can see past tables that have been there, and it'll give you an idea. And then the people who come, tickets are $25 in advance, and they're $30 at the door. We have a people's choice. They can vote for a dollar a vote on their favorite table, and then that decorator, we have a small prize for that particular decorator because the decorators are doing this at their own expense also. We're not giving them a stipend to do it, and it is time-consuming. It does take some time for them to do it. So, you know, we're appreciative of everybody who comes to our fundraiser and all of our volunteers on the day of our fundraiser. We're going to have a silent auction. We're also going to have um, raffle drawings and door prize drawings. So everybody who comes in, their stub of their ticket gets thrown into a box. And just throughout the afternoon, we'll just pull a name and we'll have small prizes for people. And then we have food, like cookies, small cakes, tea sandwiches, and we have coffee and tea and some cold drinks also. And what kind of demonstrations? This year, Donnie Fincham from the Ivy Chess will be doing floral arranging. And in the past, we've also done napkin folding, a hands-on napkin folding station. We had someone one year do small, quick hors d'oeuvres. We had someone do mantle decorating one year. So it's all entertaining related. Excellent. And what's the website where we can find out about the tickets and details? Our website is www.wheels4, the number four, wellness. Org. Wheels, the number four, wellness.org. And the Tablescapes fundraiser coming up Sunday the 23rd at the beautiful Millwood Station. What a great, great nonprofit. Ann Lamana is chair of the board of directors and a volunteer driver. Tracy Toth is director of Wheels for Wellness. Best of luck with your fundraiser and thanks for what you're doing every day. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Okie doke, time to check out how you did on the Brain Buster. The question was, the average person learned how to do this at the age of eight. Learn how to do what? Was it A, to swim, B, to sign their name in cursive, or C, ride a two-wheel bike? And the answer is A, learned how to swim. And speaking of swimming, I close with this question. What explorer invented hide-and-seek? Marco, Polo, Marco, Polo. Uh, Have a blessed week.